Hi, and welcome. We are just about ready to get started. Um, but before we do that, I do have a few housekeeping items to take care of. Um, if you have any issues today with uh, the webinar, you can try logging out and then log back in. That typically fixes a lot of the issues that people experience. Um, but if you're still having issues, then you can call the GoToWebinar help desk. The number is on the screen. It's 877-582-7011. And we're gonna drop that in the chat as well in case you continue to have any issues throughout the webinar. Next up is where you can ask questions. <clears throat> That's the little question mark icon on the right. Um, if you have questions during the webinar, please send them in. We do have a lot of people that are joining us today, so we might not get to your specific web, uh, question during the Q&A, but you can send your questions in. You might get a response from our, one of our team members after the webinar. Also, we are recording the webinar today, so because you're already signed up to attend, you will receive a link to the recording uh, by email um, by tomorrow at the latest. And just as a personal um, FYI, like many of you, we are working from home these days, so if you um, hear anything weird going on in the background, just bear with us. Uh, we're working from our, you know, makeshift home studios today. Um, so welcome to today's webinar. We are talking about the true workhorse of WordPress plugins and their trusty sidekick, the widgets. Um, we are always getting questions about the best plugins, which ones are necessary, which one should I choose for my site, et cetera. Um, so we wanted to give you a rundown today on plugins, including some of our favorites, and we will look behind the dashboard so you can see how to install and manage your plugins. But first off, I want to know more about your experience using plugins. We have a poll that's going to be popping up on the screen in just a moment. Take a minute, look at this poll, select the answer that most closely uh, resembles you, and let us know what is your biggest challenge or question about plugins. Okay, looks like um, a lot of you have already sent in your answers, so um, I'm going to close this poll and then show you the results. Looks like most of you are either new to plugins, you're just getting started and you don't know a whole lot yet, just great, um, because we're going to really help you out today, give you a good overview of what you need to know. And then the next most popular answer was choosing the best one for your needs. So again, we'll show you how to evaluate plugins um, so you can choose the right one that's going to um, do the most for you. Okay, cool. So you should be seeing my screen again. Here we go. So before we jump in, let me introduce myself, the voice you've been listening to for a few minutes already. My name is Blair Williamson. I am the content marketing manager for HostGator. I manage the HostGator blog, which is a WordPress website. And I've been working in WordPress since 2010 and building sites in WordPress since 2014. Also online, we have Jana Thibodeau. She's part of our social media team. She's gonna be following along with your questions in the chat window. She's also gonna be hanging out on social media so share what you like or drop your comments and questions on Twitter using hashtag HGWebinar. That's in the bottom right hand corner of your screen if you forget. Um, and of course, like I said, we are following your questions in the chat window and Jana will be helping to pull that together for us. So let's jump in. Today we are continuing our WordPress webinar series and we're talking about plugins and widgets. We've had a lot of questions about this in our WordPress 101 webinar, so I knew that we needed to spend some time really focusing on the topic. 
Uh, in case this is your first time joining us, let me give you a little bit of background of WordPress that's going to help orient you a, a little bit to the really important bits about plugins. WordPress is a content management system or a CMS, which is a software that allows you to create and edit website content without needing to know much code. It is the number one most popular CMS on the market and it powers more than 30% of websites worldwide. A really important thing to know about this is that WordPress is an open source content management system. That means anyone in the world can code and build features for WordPress. But one of the rules of WordPress development is don't touch the WordPress core, meaning you can't edit core WordPress files in order to add functionality. So the main way that people can contribute to WordPress and add functionality to their site is with a plugin. This is really important to know because plugins are also open source and can be created by anyone in the world. So plugins could be the top way that you might get in trouble with bad code, something to keep in mind. We'll get to this um, as we dive in. In our WordPress themes webinar, we talked about WordPress like a house under construction. On its own, WordPress is more like a skeleton. The frame or the WordPress installation holds up the house, but the walls, windows, and paint make up the visual design or the WordPress theme. The wires run electricity to power various functions of your house, and that's like the WordPress plugin. WordPress plugins are working behind the scenes to make the magic happen. You can also think about plugins like apps on your phone. So your smartphone is very powerful, powerful on its own, but most of the magic happens within the apps, right? So you have an app to run your music, an app for email, and you download apps for social media. Plugins work the same way. You'll find plugins for all kinds of functionality, such as plugins for SEO, security, speed optimizations for things like caching and image load time. But like, how do you know which ones you're gonna start with? So don't worry, we've got your back. Let's talk about some best practices for plugins. So like WordPress, like I mentioned, plugins are also open source, meaning that anybody can create a plugin for WordPress. On one hand, that's really great because there's tons of plugins on the market, but it also means that you need to be vigilant about checking compatibility. When you're considering a plugin, first you should check the reviews and see how many people have downloaded it. Just like with online shopping, you want to know how many people have used this product, or in this case, the plugin, and how they like it. You don't want to be the first person to beta test a plugin and then have it crash your website. Also in the reviews, you can find out if people say that the plugin creators are still supporting the plugin with regular updates or not. After all, it is a piece of software, so you want to know that the creators are continuing to support it and build new features or support the features they've already created. Next, you're going to want to make sure that the plugin is compatible with your version of WordPress. This is a quick and simple check, but it can save you a lot of headache in the long run um, to make sure that your plugins and your WordPress install are in sync. Finally, you're going to want to update your plugins on a regular basis. Okay, so how do you know if they need to be updated? Well, when you log into your WordPress website, you will see plugin notifications directly on your dashboard as soon as you log in. I recommend that you log in at least once a month to check your plugins and see if you need to run the updates. Another pro tip, consider backing up your website before you run plugin updates. You never know if something might glitch out or throw a compatibility issue with another plugin. That doesn't ha happen often, but it's a good practice to back up your website so you have a safe copy just in case. And in case you're wondering how to back up your website, Jana has a couple links that she's gonna drop in the chat window to show you how you can back up your website. All right, let's get into how to find plugins. So you can find and install plugins directly from your WordPress dashboard but I wanna live demo this for you. So give me just a second to swap out my screen. Okay, should be seeing my WordPress dashboard now. So this is a test site that I have set up and 
once you log into the dashboard, what you'll do is come over here to the left sidebar, um, pretty far down, go to the plugin section. The first option that you're going to see here is installed plugins. And this will show you which plugins you already have downloaded onto your site. Um, you can also see um, from here, you can activate or deactivate a plugin. Um, you can also access the settings. So for instance, you can see that this um, Ask Commit pl plugin here, um, I already have it activated because the button gives me the choice to deactivate this plugin as opposed to Hello Dolly down here, you can see the button says activate. So this plugin is downloaded, but it's not active on my site right now. Also from here, you can quickly get to settings. So um, you'll see either the activate, deactivate button and then settings. So you can manage your um, setup for that plugin directly from here. Below installed plugins on your sidebar is the option to add new. So let's click on add new. This is gonna drop you into the plugins library. This is where you can search for plugins and you'll install plugins from here as well. So on your landing page or at the beginning of the library, when you get to the main library landing page, um, there's gonna be some plugins here that will, are you know, maybe top recommended or recent ones or common ones people might be looking for. But then in this little bar right above that, you can see where it says featured, popular, recommended, favorites. This is a really great way to search for plugins if you're not really sure what you're looking for. You could just click around and see what's popular right now. And it might give you some ideas of plugins that you wanna try. You can also search for plugins over here on the right side in the search plugin box. Um, you can also, um, you're searching right now by keyword, author, or tag. Keyword is the probably the most common one that you're going to want to use. But let's say that I want to search for SEO plugins. So it's going to pull up all of the, um, some top recommended plugins. And I can scroll through here look at all the different options and start to do my evaluation process. Um, let me also show you how you can install a plugin from here and then I'm gonna show you how to check compatibility. So we're gonna use this plugin called Yoast um, a little bit later in the webinar. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this plugin. Once you've selected the plugin you want, you can see how all of these have a button on the right-hand side that says install now. It is seriously as simple as clicking that in button, install now, you'll see the little icon rolling, and now it installs. It's also gonna give me the option to activate this plugin. <clears throat> we'll come back to this in a minute. Let's go back to show you how to um, look at compatibility. So we talked about looking at reviews and compatibility. You can check both of these things directly from the dashboard while you're searching for plugins, which we just saw. First, you should check reviews and how many people have downloaded this plugin. So you're seeing right here on um, um, this classic editor, 766 reviews, five plus million active installations. Okay, cool. This looks like it's going to be ranked well. Um, lots of people are using it. I'm not going to be the first one that's going to have to test it out. Next, you want to make sure that the plugin is compatible with your current version of WordPress. You can see this in the same box as well on the right hand side. Um, if it's not compatible, it'll tell you, you know, that you need to update WordPress in order to do that. Um, this is a clean install, so all of these you can see are compatible. Finally, I recommend that once you've found a plugin that you're interested in, go to Google, search for the website about the plugin that the creators have made, and you can find more reviews on their site or on wordpress.org. And usually on that website for the plugin, you can also find um, instructions on how to set it up, how to use it, settings that you're gonna wanna activate, and more. So 
So like I said, you can do a simple Google search for plugins. You can search for best plugins or plugins for a certain type of website, such as do a search for best plugins for bloggers and see what, come up, what comes up. We've also put together this blog article for you on our website about uh, most popular WordPress plugins. We recently updated this article and it has tons of great plugins and information from most popular lists, um, to best in show for various categories such as best video plugins, SEO plugins, blog plugins, you get the idea. So copy down that uh, web address and take a look, uh, spend some time looking there after we're done. Okay, so now for the fun part. My top five plugin picks. These five plugins are going to be a great foundation for your website if you're just getting started out. But before we jump into these, I want to know if you're already using any of these plugins. I know some of you said that you're new to plugins, but there is a poll that's popping up on your screen now. Let us know which one of these are, are you already using. And if you're using more than one, then just select your favorite one. Let us know your favorite one to use. If you're not using any of them, then that's fine. Just don't respond to the poll. Okay, this is really interesting. Um, only 30% of you voted, so I'm taking that as that a lot of you are not using these plugins yet. Um, so that's great. We're still gonna give you an overview so you can see what these um, are capable of. And of those of you that voted, most of you are using Yoast, so that's great to know. Um, so thanks for taking the time to fill that out for us. Um, let's um, jump in. Let me get my screen back going back up again. Here we go. Okay. So first on the list is W3 Total Cash. W3 Total Cash is a really powerful plugin that can improve the load time of your website. So this plugin manages your caching. Uh, if you're not familiar with caching, Caching keeps a lightweight copy of your website readily available so that the browser doesn't have to download every single bit of your website each time. The result is a considerably faster page load time. But of course, when you make a major update to your site, if you go to the website and you're not seeing that new update, you might be seeing a cached version of the site. So you can also use W3 Total Cache to clear out your website cache and push the latest version of your website so to ensure that visitors are seeing that most current version. So speaking of load time, um, large photos can be one of the most taxing thing on a website's load time. So this is where we like to use Smush image compression. So what Smush does is it will compress or reduce the download size of your photo without sacrificing image quality. So if you've ever gotten into the game of trying to you know, make a photo smaller so that it doesn't take up so much space or it doesn't take forever to download. Smush can do that for you. The free version of Smush will work for most websites, but if you're, let's say, a photographer who has a lot of photos or high quality photos, or if you're a website designer or a reseller and you're hosting a lot of websites for clients, then you might want to take advantage of the paid version. Smush will, um, it also gives you access to um, their content delivery network in that paid version so that their CDN will deliver your photos for you. Um, for less than $50 a month, it gives you, you can use this plugin on unlimited sites. So it's really great if you're um, running lots of sites for clients, but if you're only running one site, then you'll be fine with the basic version. Next is WooCommerce. If you are starting an online store, then WooCommerce is our top recommendation for running your online store in WordPress. WooCommerce is very robust product. It comes with um, product pages, cart pages, checkout pages, and then there's also extensions to help you calculate taxes. It'll keep product inventory. 
um, and it has simple integrations for payment and shipping as well. Um, this plugin is very robust, so you'll want to go to their website to learn how to use all the features so you can set up your store correctly. They have some really easy to follow guides so um, that I actually used myself the first time I was setting up a WooCommerce store. Um, pro tip that you should pay attention to. In most cases, you need a design theme that is compatible with WooCommerce. So plan ahead and make sure that you choose a WordPress theme that is compatible. You are not gonna wanna have to redo that work later. Next up is a plugin called Redirection. Redirection is a really great plugin that can help you manage your links and your 301 redirects. So for instance, let's say you need to update, um, update a link, but you don't wanna lose the original SEO value. Or maybe you wanna delete an old article, but instead of deleting it, you wanna just redirect it to the homepage or a different article instead. So I like redirection plugin because it's a simple, no coding necessary solution um, for how to manage your 301s. So it's as simple as dropping the old link into one field and the new link into another field. So first you would put the old URL into this source field and then you'll put the new URL or where you want the, new, the page to redirect to into the target URL field. It's really that simple. You hit that blue add redirect button and it's done. It's also really easy to undo if you want to make the original link live again. You would just simply check the um, checkbox next to one of the links and select delete. Um, we use redirection on the HostGator blog so that we can easily manage our redirects without relying on a programmer to help us. So that's a, a good one to check out if you are, especially if you're running something like a blog and you want, you know, have an outdated article, but you want to move, send it to the new version. That's a great plugin. So I've saved my favorite for last. Yoast SEO plugin, which um, many of you are already familiar with, Yoast is the number one plugin that I can't live without. <laughs> it makes it so easy to manage the metadata on your page without needing to rely on a programmer to edit your source files. You can do this all yourself just within the plugin. So with the Yoast plugin, you can simply change the page title, the meta description for every page directly within the editor of each post, and it gives you a demo of what it's gonna look like in Google search, which is really cool. So let me um, log in and give you a live look at Yoast. I'm gonna switch back over to one of my websites. So actually, I'm gonna show you this on the HostGator blog because um, I want you to see it with some true content. So <clears throat> with Yoast, I will just go down to the bottom of my article and the Yoast plugin will be uh, will appear down here. You can see this section for Yoast SEO. I can collapse it if I don't want to see the whole thing. I always like to see the whole thing because it's a good reminder for me to make sure to check this um, metadata before I publish. So right now it's giving me, this box is giving me a demo of um, what this page would look like um, if someone's found it in a Google search. Um, you can see that it is pulling the first image within the article, which is, um, you know, not, not very eye-catching on here. What it's doing is we created a free download sheet to go along with this article, um, but because we don't have the header image loaded for this uh, article yet, it's not pulling that instead. So I might wanna change this image to something else that's easier to see. <clears throat> but this here in blue is the um, page title, and then this little paragraph below is the metadata. So what you can see is happening here in the metadata, um, it's cutting off the sentence. So if I wanted to edit this, all I would have to do is click on it, and then you should see pop up below the fields for my SEO title and for the meta description. So what I really like about Yoast is I don't have to remember the um, latest standards for meta description link. 
Um, as I'm typing the meta description, um, Yoast will highlight it in you know, red, orange, or um, green to show me the correct length and how well I'm doing on my page description. So you can see that my title is in green, so they're saying that's good, but my meta description is listed as orange. Probably means that I still have some space in my word count. So let's say um, I want to add well see i've added some text let me just keep adding some random space so probably what's happening is this might be too long so now let me try maybe i need to shorten my meta description Oh yeah, see, as soon as I took out those words, it sent it to green. So now I'm within the um, recommended character length for a meta description. So this is a really great way to play around with, um, now you can ask, you can, if you go back up to the top in this preview, it's automatically updating that preview so I can see what it looks like and how much space I have. Um, now you can see that it's not cutting off my sentence at the end with the ellipsis. Um, if I wanted to change the title, so right now what it's doing is it's showing, it's automatically populating this based on the settings of Yoast with the title, the pipe symbol, and then the site name. But if I wanted to change this, maybe I want to change this to um, just how to do keyword research and take out the part of your 2020 guide. All I would have to do is delete this. So you, you see it automatically update in the preview. And I can just type in what I would rather it be. So again, it's showing me it's orange, so I have more space for available. And now it's telling me that this is a good length. Um, and it'll give me some more analysis things down here, but this is the main feature that I use all the time. I like that I can see the demo, the preview demo of it, um, so I can make those changes immediately without having to go back and forth, back and forth to um, the source files. <clears throat> Yoast does have a free and a premium version. The free version of Yoast is very robust, and in fact, that's what we're using on the HostGator blog, is just the free version. In my opinion, the free version is really great and it's plenty for most people's needs. But if you want a little bit more help, the premium version is only $89 per year and comes with some extra insights such as keyword reports, internal linking suggestions, some more of that analysis things that might be helpful if you're not working with a, an SEO consultant. Um, but you can also look back at our um, archive. We did in August of last year, we did an intro to SEO webinar. So you could go watch that webinar, get a little bit of education um, under your belt, and you'll be perfectly fine to use this free version. Okay, next up, we are going to get into widgets. So let me get back to the slides. Oh, sorry, I'm hitting um, share instead of present. <laughs> okay, the sidekick of plugins, the widgets. So I want you to think about it like this. Plugins are something that you download and widgets are already included with WordPress. When it comes to widgets, think about it as like, kind of like you're stuck with what you've got. Widgets were created as a simple way to control the layout of your site without needing to code. So there, they are blocks of content that you can add to your sidebar, to your header, footers, and other spots throughout your design theme. Widgets were, um, common widgets could include um, categories, navigation menu, calendar, search bar, etc. Um, some plugins may even come with a widget that you can display on your site. So for example, 
a plugin like WP Forms might allow you to add a sign up field to your footer. Another thing that you should know about widgets is that widgets exist within widget areas. So think of widget areas like grid sections on your website. So if you were to take the design of your site and think about breaking it into vertical or horizontal sections like a puzzle, this would be widget areas. So here's an example from the HostGator blog. If we break our design into vertical and horizontal sections or blocks, we have um, our widget sections would include a header and then a navigation. We have a sub navigation. And we have the right sidebar. That's kind of our main widget area on the HostGator blog. The widget areas will be determined completely by your design theme. So keep that in mind when you're choosing a theme. You're stuck with the widget areas that come with your theme. Um, you can hide them to some extent, but in my experience, it's nearly impossible to create a widget area where run does not exist. So if you know that you want a right sidebar, then you want to look for a design theme that comes with a widget area for a right sidebar. So now let's look under the hood a little bit so you can see um, widgets in action. And I'm going to show you where you will find this um, in WordPress. So again, give me a second. I'm going to swap out my screen. Okay. So I'm gonna show you this again in the um, HostGator blog, just because we already have an active theme on here. So under appearance, which is in your left sidebar, you'll go to the widgets, it's the third item on the list. <clears throat> and then once we get here, you'll see on the right hand side, is my widget sections. So default sidebar, home sidebar, subscribe sidebar, and social footer. Those are my widget sections that are available on this theme. On the left hand side is the available widgets. So these are all the different widget types that you can add into the various sections of your theme. <clears throat> so for example, what you're seeing here, the default sidebar on widget area on our site is available on would be seen on all pages whereas the home sidebar would only display on the home page of the site for our site this is mostly the same but um, I could have something on uh, maybe I want to display something on the home page but I don't want it on every single article that's where this would be handy now let me show you how you edit these so um, you'll just click in a widget area and it's really easy to just um, change out what's there click save but let's say i want to grab i want to add a menu to this one of these sidebars let me see where i have them if i have a menu available There's the navigation menu. So I'm gonna grab this navigation menu. You just click on it and um, drag it where you want it to go. Let's say I wanna have it right below the search bar on my site. You should be able to see how there's this little dotted line behind or dotted box behind the navigation menu that I'm holding onto. That's showing if I were to release this right, uh, my mouse right now, this is where it would drop into place. Okay, so now it's ready there and it's pulling from my menu section, which I can select here. Um, so I'm gonna select the hero menu. It's the one main one that I have um, created for this site. <clears throat> you would manage that over here in the left sidebar under also under appearance in the menu section. But I could even give it a title. Um, and I can click save. And as soon as I hit save, you'll see that little ticker going. That change is live on my site now. Let's say I wanna move it to a different spot. I will collapse it and again, just like pick it up and drag it where you want it to go and drop it in there. 
But if I decide that I don't want it anymore, all I have to do is open the little uh, collapse menu and click delete. You should know that all of these changes are happening automatically. Once you save it within one of the little widget sections itself, there's not like a save button for the widget section as a whole or a publish. You are managing the save within each one of these little widgets on their own. So just keep that in mind that I was making those changes um, actually live. <clears throat> okay, so that's how we are going to um, manage the widgets. All of these widgets on the left are available for me to use in different areas. You can see a lot of these are coming from different plugins that I already have on here. And then some like custom HTML is a really great one to use if you want to um, display an image or if you, let's say you have a, um, a button, maybe you have a custom constant contact embed button where people can sign up for e your email list. That would be a great place to use something like that. Okay, I think that is all that I have to say about widgets at this point. So, Jana, I think we're ready for Q&A. Do we have any questions that we need to address? Hey Blair, yeah, there's been so many great questions and I've been trying to answer them as um, the ones that I can as they come up. Um, so let me just go back to the beginning here. Uh, there seems to be a lot of questions about a backup. Do you know if we have a WordPress plugin uh, for backups that we can recommend? Yeah, actually we do have an article that is um, like top five, um, plugin backup plugins um i think i sent you that article earlier let me see if i can find it real quick and we can drop it in the chat um okay there's also a few questions about and very valid concerns about people being concerned about the validity of um, you know, picking a plugin since anybody can create them. Can you just recap a little bit about how to make sure you're getting a plugin um, that you could trust? Yes, um, I'm going to drop this um, link in the chat. So I'm dropping in, a, in the chat the link for um, seven best WordPress backup plugins. It's an article you can read on our site. Okay, so how uh, the question is how to validate a plugin and know that it's safe just because ever somebody could have anyone could have created it so <clears throat> this is where i say go back to the reviews and the number of downloads um you can when you're in the live actually let me start with this i would never install a plugin that is not available within the plugin library that you can access from the dashboard because then you know that the plugin that's been created has been, let's say, quote, submitted to WordPress for review, and it can be considered, I don't want to say an official plugin, but you can at least say that it's been reviewed by the WordPress organization if it's available in the library. I would never get a plugin from another site and upload it. You can pay for some, but even like WooCommerce has things that you'll pay for on their own site that you can then upload into your install. But even the word, the WooCommerce plugin itself, you can access from within the library. So I would say to be double, to be super safe, start from within the library that's already available within your dashboard on WordPress. Next, Look at the number of how many other people have downloaded the plugin, uh, and then look at the reviews. Read what people are writing in the reviews. Are they saying that, um, that they like the plugin, that it's working as expected? Do they comment about challenges or issues that they've had with the plugin? And then make sure that it's compatible with your version of WordPress. You can see all of that from within the dashboard of the plugin library. You'll see all of that on the box when you're looking at the plugin. I hope that helps. 
Yes, there's been a couple of questions as well about the number of plugins that you can or should use on your website. Is there a recommendation? Yeah. I don't know that there's an official number recommended by WordPress. Um, I would say if you're looking for a plugin to do a specific thing, stick with only one plugin. So for example, I had a customer email us earlier this morning and said, hey, I have seven contact form plugins on my site. Which one should I use? Okay, you don't, you shouldn't need seven plugins to do the same thing. So choose your favorite one and stick with that and then delete the ones that you're not using. I would say if you can stay under, I don't know, 20 plugins maybe, that would be a good rule of thumb. Um, and whatever plugins you're not using, I recommend you delete those. Don't just have them hanging out in your site even though they might be um, deactivated. Perfect. Well, that was another question as well about what to do if you're not using them anymore. Uh, about updates, do you always update a plugin when recommended? Are there any risks with that? You know, that's a great question. Um, I think that you could, when you get a plugin recommendation or an update for your plugin, maybe just go do a search, go back to the web, the marketing site of that plugin and see what they are saying is included in this update. Another thing I would recommend you can do is go to wordpress.org and you can sign up for their newsletter as well. And they'll send out emails about um, new WordPress updates that are available. And if there is a, sometimes they'll let you know if there's a known issue with the plugin. That happened to us earlier this year or end of last year there was a compatibility issue with a very popular plugin and WordPress sent out a uh, notice in their newsletter um, giving you instructions on what you needed to do. So um, the other thing I recommend is whenever you see a plugin update, go ahead and up and back up your website before you run the update. That way, in case you do have an issue, you still have that clean copy of your site that you could um, put back up if you needed to. Um, okay, great. Uh, so a question just came in, and I think this is this is interesting because we certainly use this. Is there a plugin that would add context to your blog, email, or distribution list? Context. Oh, yes. There are a lot of different plugins that will handle that, and it really just depends on um, what you want to use, um, your personal preference. We are using, I'm going to pull up an article for you. Um, okay, I've got an article for six best contact form plugins for WordPress that I'm going to drop in the chat. Um, so a quick answer, um, on the blog, we use Constant Contact for our um, email newsletters for the blog. Constant Contact does have its own extension that you can use to um, get con uh, email subscribers and it'll connect directly to your um, Constant Contact list. So I definitely recommend that. And then we also use um, Optin Monster is another plugin that we use and recommend um, that can um, create pop-ups on your site dynamically that then people can sign up and subscribe. I think that one's also on this list um, on this blog article that I dropped in the chat. So there are tons of them out there for contacts like WP Forms is another one that's created by WordPress. Um, it just comes down to what's the best for your needs. So um, for us, it's easy to use one that will connect with Constant Contact because then it will send the contacts directly to my Constant Contact list without having to do an additional, you know, download the contacts on a regular basis and upload them into Constant Contact. It automatically syncs. Okay, here's a question. I think it was specific when you were doing the Yoast demo, but it's it's a great question. Uh, what is a slug? 
Oh, yeah. So the slug is when your web address is postgator.com slash blog slash six best contact forms. <laughs> the slug is the part that's at the end of the URL after the slash. Okay. Um, is there, I think you answered this as well, but if you have a widget, can you apply it to only a specific page or can you indicate what page will use that widget? You know, that's a good question. And I think it would really depend on the widget area that is available on your design theme. Um, I know for my design theme, for the work for the HostGator blog, I don't think we can do a widget specific to a page, but that's based on the limitations of my design theme. So you should definitely look and see um, what your design theme will allow you to do. Some things might uh, give you the option to select a page based on the widget itself but you'd have to look into that specifically. Um, okay, what if you use a plugin or update a plugin that ends up breaking your site? Are you able to roll that back? So, um, yes, if. <laughs> um, I'm gonna stump you today. <laughs> yeah, first I recommend that you um, back up your website do a, you know do a manual backup when you're going to install a plugin uh, and then if something were to happen yes you would have a very current version of your website that you could roll back to i will tell you this on its own wordpress doesn't let you just undo there's really no such thing as an undo button within wordpress that's where you're going to rely on your web host to help handle those things so we do have some extensions that you can add to your HostGator package that would manage um, update or backups for you on a regular basis. So that would be another thing to look into as well. Okay, there's been a couple of questions. Elementor, I know that is a very popular uh, web building tool. Do you know if plugins and widgets work on Elementor? You know, um, honestly, I have not worked in Elementor um, personally to be able to speak to that. Um, I would say any of you that are listening, if you know, can answer that, if you've used <laughs> Elementor and you wanna drop your answer in the chat window to help out, that would be great. Um, I know that from what I know, Elementor helps you set up the page but then you should still be able to manage your plugins from, or your widgets from WordPress. Okay. But I don't have personal experience with it. <laughs> I do see someone answered, Cameron, thank you. Yes, they work with Elementor usually. I would assume it's kind of like the theme, there's gonna be different compatibility issues depending on how exactly your website is built and the plugins that are gonna work. Yeah, great, okay. thanks Cameron. Yes, they work. I'm getting a couple of people answering, yes, perfect. Um, let's see, got some questions here. Um, okay, Blair, this is, I see some, someone was watching. I see you have 14 plugins to update. Do you update them every time notifications come up or what is your schedule? That's a good question. Thanks for catching me. <laughs> um, Why? So it depends on which site you were watching me in on. Um, so one of the sites that I demoed with today is my test site. So I have it specifically for things like this, to do a webinar demo, to um, write an article for the blog when I wanna demo something from within, the, within a site. So that one, I'll be honest with you, I don't pay attention to plugins at all. That one has the plugins that it came with automatically. Um, on the blog, we do, um, I have, um, someone who helps me with the website that um, I'll ask her to run those for me because she can run the backup as well. Um, just 
from the nature of having more people on my team, right? Um, but I I would recommend that you do it once a month. Um, just because me personally, if I'm logging in to just to make an update to an article, I might not have the time to sit and do um, the plugin updates injustice, right? Like I would want to set aside time for that. So I would set aside um, maybe 30 minutes once a month to log into your site and uh, make those updates. Again, do a backup first and then run the updates. Doing an update for a plugin takes just seconds. It's just as simple as clicking that button and running the update. Um, but it's not a thing I try to do every day because I don't want it to slow me down from the the you know daily work I'm doing on my site. So I recommend logging in once a month, setting aside 30 minutes, running a backup, and then updating your plugins. Okay, here's a, what what theme are we using on the blog? Um, the blog is a custom coded theme. <laughs> um, I think I've got most of the gist. There are many questions about the recording and yes, the recording is going to be emailed and made available on the website. Um, past recordings are also available on the blog website. I've put the link in the chat. I, and Blair, the chat is not going to be included in the recordings. Um, I'm gonna, I can share some of these links out on the Twitter site. So if you go to at HostGator on Twitter, most of the, these links will be there. I'll try to be sure and scrape them all in the next couple of minutes and add them out um, this afternoon. In case awesome. you miss those chat link options, they seem to be helpful. Um, let's see, a few more questions are coming in. Can you have multiple backups or just the most recent one? I guess it just depends on if you want to revert back to a different version. I think the most recent one would be sufficient. Yeah, I I would agree. Um, I think you can keep multiple, but um, I would just make sure you always have the most current one on hand. <clears throat> I did also drop a link in the chat to um, that add-on product I was mentioning, which is called Code Guard, and it will do daily automatic backups of your site, or you can um, tell it how often you want it to do uh, backups. Um, and so that's um, that's a good way to kind of like a set it and forget it type um, method to backups. So you don't necessarily have to remember to do them all the time. Um, and it would set, it would run it at a certain time of day every day. So you could, you would know, okay, well, I didn't run this up to, back up immediately before I did this update, but if my backup went up at midnight, Okay, I know that since midnight I've only posted one blog article. That would be easy for me to find and repost. Um, let's see. Here's something WordPress doesn't make my site compatible uh, with mobile. Is there a resource for that? Would that have to be a specific theme that you validate is, is mobile ready? Yes, I think that you do need a mobile um, ready design theme for that to happen. That's happening within your theme, um, not within WordPress itself. So most design themes now should be mobile ready. Um, and if yours is not, that's probably a good time to think about, um, you know, doing an update to your design. Okay. Um, I do see some people are answering as far as the chat. If you're interested in saving these links, it looks like you can either select all and copy it. I just tried it. I right clicked with my mouse and saved it as a file. Um, I will, again, I'll be, I'll be sharing these out on the HostGator Twitter channel as well. Okay, cool. Um, and if you are um, looking to start a new site, we do have a link on the screen for where you can get up to 60% off um, your new WordPress site. So check that out. And um, you will be getting the recording via email. And uh, we'll go back through your questions and see if there's anything else we need to answer on an individual basis, or we may even put together a blog article if we see some common questions uh, going on. But um, Jana, if that looks like the top of the questions that we need to answer, then I think we'll call it a day. I think we're good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us.
Hope you learned a lot and uh, we'll see you next time. Actually, you can mark your calendar in July. We're gonna be doing um, uh, intermediate advanced search engine optimization webinar. So um, be looking out for that uh, to be able to register soon. Thanks for joining us.